we're on. Hi. Right. Hey guys, it's Erin and Jenny from uh, Revisions Mentor. <laughs> and here we are. Here we are again. Erin's in Wilmington. I'm in Minnesota. We're tag teaming again from many, many miles away from each other. Yes. And we are we are just adjusting to this new life that that we're all we've all been kind of thrown into. So um, that's what we want to talk to you guys about today is how we are surviving the um, the pandemic and how your business can survive too. Because we are really good news, and we're very I think lucky and fortunate to be able to to say this is that with some creative sort of strategizing, we've figured out a way to keep our staging business running really smoothly. And not much has changed for us. We're really, really lucky for that. Yeah, we're very thankful. And, you know, we can't guarantee that anything is recession proof, but we can tell you that the business model that we've created has sustained us through this pandemic. And and um, and we want to share, you know, the things that we attribute to this success with you guys. Right. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. What do you think, Erin? Like, what do you think uh, are kind of some of the most important things that we've done or shifted in terms of, you know, addressing the current climate? Yeah, and that, you know, I think the overall theme and the the overall uh, takeaway that we want you to take with you is that the integrity that we've shown and the relationships that we have sustained within this community by making smart business moves with realtors and smart business moves with investors and and fairness in our billing practices and you know leniency when it's absolutely necessary and all of those the, the those means of being flexible I think have um, kind of given a solid footing because, um, because of the relationships we've been able to maintain in the community. Yeah. And on that note, I mean, we've really kind of focused in on reconnecting and reaching out to those, you know, community partners to yeah. see how they're doing, see what they're doing, see how we can collaborate see what our, you know, what our friends in the community are needing, mm -hmm. see what we might be able to, you know, provide or barter or share. Yeah. There's been a lot of idea exchanging and a lot of um, support, especially I think in the, um, you know, women supporting women. It's, oh. you know, something I think that's super important to you and I. And yep. um, I love that we're seeing small business owners like ourselves in our community really reaching out to one another and saying, hey, what can we do? Let's set some stuff up. Um, those contests were, uh, I think, have been a, a kind of a cool way that that's been happening. Um, yeah, absolutely. I and mean, we've, we've really kind of turned to social media and, and we've always kind of relied on social media for um, promotion. And we don't have a marketing budget. We don't spend any money on marketing. We do all of our marketing through social media because it's free, it's there, it's relevant. It's mm -hmm. easy-ish, um, yeah. and um, yeah, we've we've kind of um, we've been able to you know use those resources within our community to to kind of lean on one another in these in these busy times, these not so busy times. Yeah, I mean, so the contests have been super fun. I mean, we've done it a little bit where we're just um, having people uh, submit photos of um, home projects that they're doing during this time and doing um, gift card giveaways to support local restaurants in our community. Um, another cool thing that um, we've seen are two or three or four small businesses uh, partnering up together and then running a contest and then those three or four businesses all offering some part of their service as part of the, the you know, the package that the client wins. And um, that's pretty cool too. And it's a way to, you know, keep the local dollars in the community and, um, you know, support each other. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's never been more important than right now. And, you know, in doing this, there are other benefits, you know, in, in supporting each other through social media, you're also staying on people's radar, right? So mm -hmm. those realtors whose um, listings you're sharing for them to help them get a further reach or, you know, when um, you reach out to realtors and maybe offer to do some photo editing for them because you have, you know, this great photo editing software that it's really easy for you to use and, and you know, you're helping them and, 
and they're going to remember you down the line when, when they need staging services. So, yeah. Plus, yeah. Um, plus um, posting other people's stuff, like, like the realtors that you're talking about, Erin, it gives us social media material to use. So when we're reposting, you know, a realtor's listing, it's an opportunity for us to put something else out on social media attached to our name again, usually our work. And, um, you know, we're helping ourselves, we're helping others, and we're staying really active on social media. I think that's an important part of surviving, you know, a, a pandemic is staying, you know, staying relevant, keeping conversations going with your social media following. Um, staying engaged with your social media community yeah absolutely and and guys if you have other ideas that you are implementing during these crazy times please drop them in the comments below because we're listening i mean your success and our success I and mean, we all kind of rely on one another i mean we want staging to remain an important part of the real estate industry and um the way we can do that is by all continuing to grow and and change and roll with the punches. And so if you have other ideas that you've been doing that you found that are successful, throw them in the links below because we, um, or throw them in the comments because we, we want to know. We want to know what you're doing and uh, we love hearing your ideas. We do. And we love hearing your questions. Um, if you're not subscribing to us, subscribe. Let us know. Let us know what we can, what we can talk to you about. We have tons of information. Um, and on that note, I think, Erin, we have a lot of other ideas about how we're kind of creatively, um, you know, surviving this really weird time. Um, let's talk about, I think, I think one of the big challenges that comes into play is, you know, the, the worry about whether or not, you know, we're going to get paid when we yeah. send out invoices. You know, it's a, it's a tough time financially for everybody. Um, yeah. It's something we've talked talked a lot about. You know, are our are our clients going to have the ability to pay us when their invoices come due? Um, and we have been looking at some different options for how to get creative with our clients, um, recognizing that they're struggling as well. Um, we all need to get paid. What can we do differently? And I think one of the things we came up with was, well, two things really. One was. Um, talking with our clients about payment plans, allowing people to pay um, installments that might be more manageable for them um, and still allow us to get payment that we need to sustain. Um, then the other thing that we have looked at doing is, is um, renegotiating contracts with our clients that allow them to pay when the house sells um, rather than um, paying on a monthly ongoing basis. That's how we run our contracts now. Um, we're invoiced and pay every four weeks for the next coming four weeks. Um, shifting that to, okay, we know you don't have the cash flow right now. Once your house goes under contract and, and, and closes, um, we now have renegotiated uh, that you will pay us the balance due at closing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we negotiate when we have to, and you know, times, you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And while we don't want to do under and anything to undermine the in integrity of our field or to undercut our, you know, competitors, if you will, within our community who are often our friends, you know, other stagers in our community. Um, we also know that in order to stay afloat, you know, sometimes you have to just work with people and you have to, to work to maintain those relationships so that those builders or those investors will still be loyal to you when this is over, when they say, gosh, you know, time got lean and, you know, those girls worked with me and I appreciate that. And, you know, when yeah. we all get back on our feet again, then, you know, you, you want to maintain that positive. <laughs> Positivity. <laughs> You want to maintain the relationships. You 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 want to keep your relationships. That's what you're. I, I hear you, girl. Yes. And listen. Um, along those lines, you're talking about you know kind of figuring out how to negotiate with with people and situations. Um, bartering services. Um, so we've recently found ourselves in a situation where we had some inventory, and we needed a place to go with it, and um, to minimize expenses. 
uh, we decided it would be um, easier for us to move it into a new location rather than to take it back to our warehouse and all of the logistics that go with that. So we actually bartered with a realtor who was looking for um, some staging to uh, do photos for her MLS listing. And we were able to make a great trade. We offered some of our services, she offered some of, of hers, and we were able to negotiate a situation that really worked out well for, for both of us. So yeah. not something that we've typically done, but um, kind of figuring out how we can bend and flex and figuring out what we have to offer. You know, there are things that you can offer as a home stager that don't require money and you know, your time, your right. knowledge, right. Um, you know, your, your opinions, mm -hmm. your expertise. This stuff is, is valuable to other people. It doesn't cost you a dime. Um, it's it's durable, all of it. So think about how you can use your um, use your knowledge to, you know, to leverage trades for things that you need uh, right now to support your home staging business. Exactly. Um, I think one of the really important things that Karen and I want you guys to understand is that um, <clears throat> despite what's happening, you know, in the world, with a little flexibility, your, your staging business does not have to change that much. You know, what, what we're doing not really changed. Um, how we're doing it has changed, but um, you know, things are things are good. Things are good for us. So they are. They are. And we um and uh, you know honestly one of the ways that we were able to put ourselves in this position is by owning our own inventory. And I know that's not something um that everybody's able to do on um, in the beginning, but we've we've kind of told you from the from the very beginning of our video series that we are big advocates for you know renting renting in the beginning when you have to, and then use those profits and turn around and put that money back into your staging inventory. And we went through a, a pretty substantial period of time where Jenny and I weren't bringing home paychecks because we were reinvesting and reinvesting and reinvesting the profits from the first handful of staging jobs that we had. And we put that directly into new inventory. And now that now that we have that, we have leverage. And we, you know, all of our all of our stream of income is profit because we have virtually no overhead. We're not paying rental fees. You know, our overhead is when we have a move, we pay our movers and we have our, our storage facility, which is minimal. And because we just keep things moving into different houses. Um, we don't need a massive warehouse because when we have, you know, a handful of houses come available, we start working our connections. We start making phone calls. We, you know, we look for vacant listings. We talk to realtors we've worked for before and we wheel and deal. We make moves. So, um, and, and a huge part of that is because we have our own inventory. So I know that there are other staging models that, um, where they teach stagers not to own their inventory and there, you know, there is liability. There's out of pocket expense, um, but once you own it, it's yours. And then all of those paychecks that come in, come into your pockets. So that's been that's been critical in the, especially in this situation. You know, um, thankfully the housing market's still strong where we live. Um, realtors are still doing virtual tours and they're doing virtual open houses, and uh, lenders are still closing. I mean, they, you know, there's there's things are still happening. So, you know, our builders models are, are still, they still need their uh, furnishings and we are very thankful for that. So. This is an interesting time, I think, for, for home stagers. And, and after talking with a couple of realtors in our community, um, realtors are feeling really strongly that, that staging services are going to be more critical now than ever. Um, interest rates are, so low right now for buyers. Um, investors specifically are using this opportunity right now to, um, you know, look for uh, properties that they can scoop up. And um, it's it's an interesting time to be a home stager. And by interesting, I mean it's a it's a good time to be a home stager. This is, um, you know, a bit of a silver. Uh, silver lining and everything and you know with 
all due respect to the struggles that we're all facing. Um, there are some there are some really positive things um, that that we can extrapolate from the current moment. Yes. So um, guys, do us a favor and and hit like and hit subscribe and drop us your questions. Drop us an email and um, get on our email list and we will provide you access with tons of materials that will help you along in this process so that you can get your staging business off on the right foot. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, everybody.